what's new for your 2022 tax return. So in this video I'm, and the podcast, I'm going to give you a little inside scoop in what's happening in the tax world and uh, kind of the latest news. We're going to talk about what's new in the tax return and what's disappearing. Also, some of the trends you know, related to high inflation and the end of COVID. Also, a big thing is this, the whole work from home trend is having a lot of tax implications, which are going to keep going, going, going forward. It's going to be quite interesting. Uh, also, for the last two years, quite a few investors had to pay a lot in tax. This last year, mostly not. In fact, some of them are getting really huge uh, refunds, tax refunds. So what's going on? Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is how today's high inflation affects your taxes, how the work from home trend affects tax returns, how to save tax on COVID-19 benefits you may have had to repay. We're going to talk about some new tax credits and deductions this year. What deductions and credits are discontinuing for next year? What's the difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit? And you know, how do you estimate your tax refund based on a tax deduction or a tax credit? We're going to talk about how to avoid CRA scams, talk a little bit about the effective use of the new first home savings account, FHSA, which I'm calling the Renters RSP, which is coming out in 2023. And then we're going to talk about, so a number of our clients are getting huge tax returns. We're in the middle of doing 500 tax returns, and we've seen quite a few people getting, you know, decent returns, 5, 10, 15,000. And a smaller number getting really big returns, 20000 to 90000 Can you imagine getting a $90,000 tax refund? So we're going to talk a little bit about all of that. All right, so here's the important changes we're going to talk about. First one is inflation. So now most tax brackets and limits on the tax return have been increased by 6.3% for inflation. So that's the number that the government's using. So you can think of 6.3% of going in there. So now it's been 2%, you know, from 1992 to 2020, it was basically constant at 2%. So we got so used to having, our, you know, everything increased by just a little bit every year. This year, it's quite a bit higher. So what that means is if you get a raise of 6.3%, you're basically in the same tax bracket as you were the same the year before. Okay, so that's kind of how it affects you. So, and most of the tax deductions and tax credits have gone up. Now, I'm just going to explain what the difference is between a tax deduction and tax credit. You know, if you look at your tax return, you see your income and then de deductions. That gives you taxable income. And then you see tax credits on the right in the calculation of how much you owe. So basically, a, a tax deduction reduces your taxable income. So the refund that you get on it is based on your marginal tax bracket. Okay. Now, marginal tax brackets, there's lots of little ones. But just to give you a rough idea... Think of the first 50,000 a year as, as a tax at 20%, the next 50, 50 to 100 at 30, from, uh, from 100 to 150 at 40, from uh, over 150, it's basically 50, and the top tax brackets like 120, and it's and that's 54%, which is one thing that bugs me. Why should, if I do all the work, why should, shouldn't I get at least half? The over 50% ones really bug me. So anyway, that's roughly what the tax brackets are. So based on your income, if you if you had a ten thousand dollar tax deduction, whichever the top it reduces your income by ten thousand, whatever bracket you're in, that's how much of a refund you get. You know, twenty to thirty or forty, fifty percent. So meanwhile, a tax credit is always based on the lowest bracket. Okay, so everybody gets the same thing. It's based on twenty percent. So if you get a tax credit of ten thousand, it's basically two thousand of tax refund that you get. So that's the difference. So now we're going to talk. There's a few new things that are coming and going that are deductions and some that are tax credits. So just want you to understand what the difference is and so you can quickly see how it affects you. Now, first thing is a fair number of people are going to be repaying COVID-19 benefits, okay? And this is a deduction. So the government has sent out lots of letters to people to try to reclaim some of these. Okay, now, so if you had to repay some of them, so most of these benefits were discontinued in 2022. Probably will get a T4A for any benefits you received and a deduction for the amounts that you repaid. So there was little or no tax withheld with these benefits or from EI. So if you received them, you should expect that you might uh, owe some tax on your tax or get a much smaller tax refund because they, they haven't withheld enough tax on those. So now if you got a letter to repay one of those benefits, and there were lots of them, there are at least five major ones, you know, CERB, SESB, CRB, I mean, there's a whole bunch of them. Um, if you got um, and had to repay some of those, you actually have some tax planning you can do. So what you can do is 
you could basically you can if you had to repay it in 2022 you can reclaim you can claim a deduction on there's a line 23 to 10 you can actually claim a deduction for it so you, you get some of that you, you're not taxed back on that amount so also there is a form called t1b so what you can do is you can claim the deduction on your tax return for the year you received the benefits or you can claim you can use it for 2022 so you get to decide which year to, to claim the deduction. And that's what you do on Form T1B. So if you had to repay, you know, 10,000 of benefits, you can say, well, you know what? You know, back in 2020, when I received it, I was at a pretty low tax bracket. Last year, I actually earned quite a bit. So I want to get my deduction from that year. So basically, you, what you should do is claim the deduction in the year that you have the highest taxable income or in the highest tax bracket. Okay, so you get a choice of which year you claim it for the the year you received it or the uh, the you know last year. So now a big thing going on is the is the whole work from home. You know, it's even got its own acronym now, WFH, work from home. There's always there was always a, some of it going on, but now it's a big thing, and it looks like it's going to continue, not to the same extent, but it's going to be much more than what it used to be. Now, you've always been able to claim employment expenses that are detailed if you get a form called a T-2200 signed by your employer, okay? So you, you claim them, uh, you claim the employment expenses sheet, is it a sheet on the tax return where you can claim it, and you can claim any expenses that your employer specifically allows on the T-2200. So if you've seen that form, it's a, law, it's a, a several part page form, it's got a whole bunch of questions on it. And if the employer says that you can claim all these things, then you can claim them all. So it's things that they're not paying for you, like costs of your home and mileage and whatever other expense, cell phone and internet and other things that you have from any other costs from working from home. It might even be, you know, stationary and computers and stuff. So now for 2022, there are two options available and it's the same as it has been last year. Uh, so if you work from home because of COVID for at least four consecutive weeks, weeks, each spouse can claim one of these or the T2200. So the T2200 is still there like normal, but there's two simplified methods because lots and lots of people are at home. So one is the flat rate method. Okay. So you can claim up to $500 each with no employer form or need to keep receipts. So you just basically, you claim $2 a day for up to 250 days when you worked more than 50% from home. So it's the days that you work, how many days did you work mostly from home? You claim 250 days and you get $500 deduction from this. Okay. The detail, if you want to claim more expensives or more than 200, more than 500 bucks, or you have it in detail, there's a simplified form called the T2200S, S for simplified. Okay. So, and this one, instead of having all the questions that are on the regular T2200, it's a very short form. The, the employer basically just signs it. There's not really not hardly any questions on it. And then you can claim in detail the expenses that you are, that you have. And this is what you should do if it's more than 500 bucks. Now you could so you can fill out the workspace in home or you know the work from home sections of the business or the of the employment expenses worksheet that's what we send to our clients and you can only claim space in the home it's a very limited number of expenses that you can claim for this you can only claim space in the home office supplies and cell phone with a simplified form that's all you can claim Okay, so if you have more expenses, you'll need to, to get the full T2200 from your employer to record them in detail. Okay, so there's three methods that you can use for claiming work from home expenses for last year and for 2022, and the same as it was the previous year. Now, there are no proposals to extend the flat rate method or the T2200S simplified form for 2023, and that's going to be interesting. So lots of people are still working from home, but those simplified methods are gone. Now, for 2024, likely the only form that you're going to be able to have is the full T2200 form. That's probably all that's going to be available. And it asks a lot of questions, and some employers just hesitate to fill it out because there's all kinds of stuff you have to answer. Imagine if you got hundreds of employees working from home, and you got to fill out this multi-page form with many questions on it for every single one of them. So it could be a problem, but it's since lots of people are working from home, this is going to be kind of the, the interesting showdown for this year. So many people are still working from home, and this has become a long has become long term in many cases. The T twenty two hundred form will likely be used extensively for T for twenty twenty four and for future years. So it's going to be a big new thing. It's going to 
hear a lot about this T2200 for most likely. Now, so if you work from home, it's a good thing to talk to your employer now to make sure they will fill one out for you and that they will include all the expenses that you pay. So there's the, each session, you have to, they have to specifically allow you to claim certain types of expenses. And if they don't on that, then you can't claim it. So such as space of the home, there's car expenses, cell phone, internet, and stationery and computers and all kinds of other things. And if they say that you need them, then then you can claim them. So now if, for 2023 and on, if you don't have that form, then you can't deduct any work from home expenses at all. So that's why it's worth talking to your employer about it now. Now, if your main office is at work, then driving to work is considered personal. It's just commuting to work. So commuting to work is personal. However, if your main office is at home, so you work from home the bulk of the time and you occasionally go to the office, then driving to work now and then can be tax deductible for you. And if, if that's what's filled out on your form, then you can actually claim that as a deduction. So it's interesting. You, your, your commute to work, if it's you know your main office is at home and you're just doing that occasionally, that would be uh, that would be deductible. So it's the same thing as you know it used to be. You go into the office now. If you had to drive to a different office of the company, that could be a tax deduction. Okay, the company might refund it, or it could be that uh, if they don't refund it, that you can claim it as a tax deduction on your form. It's considered business related. Okay, so it's the same thing now. If your main office is at home, then driving to the head office is actually considered going to a secondary office. So that's why it's important to specify in this, where actually is your main place of work? It affects what you can actually claim. Another big thing is that you should get your employer's HST or GST number. Now you can ask them for it, or you know if you just find any invoice that they ever sent out, they all have the HST or GST number on it. Make a note of what it is because it gives you a larger refund because you can claim the HST or GST on the work from home expenses. So all the expenses that you have, you, know, you get an extra 13% claim if you get their HST number, for example. It's worth being able to get that. So that whole work from home is going to be interesting. And this next year is going to be actually quite an interesting year for it. Now, okay, so new tax credits. There's a new tax credit for the disabled. There's one main one, but a bunch of the provinces have their own versions. There's a bunch of things going on. So you know what? There are already lots of tax credits for the disabled. It's a whole long list of them. And it's so easy Many people don't know about most of, about many of them and don't even know what they can claim. And so a lot of them aren't, aren't claimed, but there's a long list of them. One of the most underclaimed credits is the caregiver giver credit. So now if you're a spouse, child, grandchild, parent, grandparent, brother, sister, aunt, uncle, niece, or nephew, so that's the extent, kind of extended immediate family, has a physical or, or mental impairment. And actually, this funny thing is that they don't clearly define it. So they have, they have a physical or mental impairment with day-to-day -day living, such as food, shelter, or clothing, and their income is below the basic personal exemption, which is 14000 now, then you can claim the caregiver credit, which is between 2350 and 7525 credit that you can claim, depending on which person it is and, and this, the situation. Now, the funny thing is, because they don't specify what exactly is a physical or mental impairment. You know, you, you help them with a you know, with their food, clothing, and shelter. But what does that mean? And, you know, like most of us think our some of our family is, is you know, somewhat mentally impaired, maybe kind of a, an odd thing to, to be able to say. But there, there isn't, you don't need to have a doctor specify it or anything. You just say they're mentally impaired and I help them and their income is very low and you can claim this tax credit. And that's been around for years, but hardly anybody knows about it. All right, so it's a kind of interesting one. Now, the new tax credit this year, the biggest one is called the Home Accessibility Tax Credit, the HAT-C. So now, if you're 65 or older, are eligible for the disability tax credit and have remodeled your home for safer access, the tax credit has been increased to 20000 of your expenses. Now, this is actually not completely new, but it was 10000 before. Now it's 20000 So you can spend 20000 bucks remodeling your home to make it more accessible for you because of disabilities. And that can all be a tax credit. So that means you can get 20% of it back. Now, the new deduction this year is there's a new one for tradespeople and construction employees. So this is kind of if you're traveling. So it's called the labor mobility deduction. Okay. So it allows tradespeople, apprentices, and employees working in construction to claim meals and lodging expenses paid to earn income in a temporary work location. So this is, you know, uh, there's a big shortage of 
tradespeople. And this means you can go off to work somewhere that's not in your in your home city. You can go off somewhere else and live there temporarily or whatever it is and, and claim some meals and lodging and stuff like that. So you, know, you can claim a, this is a deduction of up to 4000 a year or, you know, half of what you earn at that location. So if you earn eight, you know, eight thousand at that or more at that other location, you can claim a deduction of up to four thousand. So that's a, another new kind of interesting one. Now, and on top of those federal ones, there's a whole bunch of provincial ones out there. And actually, you got to look at um, uh, it, this would be a long, boring video or a podcast if I mentioned all of them. Okay, so I'll just give you some examples. So, uh, so here in Ontario, there are some new tax credits. And most uh, provinces of other ones. So the interesting one for last year was the Ontario Staycation Credit. So this is a one-time tax credit for Ontario only to claim 20% of your stay in an Ontario hotel, cottage, or campground during 2022. So up to a and so it's up to a thousand individually or two thousand as, as a family, and you actually have to have to to stay in them. Now part of this is you have to have the HST number for the company that you're staying with, or it's not deductible. So you won't be able to claim the, the tax credit. So now this credit, that was part of reopening and, you know, trying to get people to start traveling within Ontario a little bit. This credit was for 2022 and is gone for 2023. So it's a one-year thing only. You know, we had quite a few people that stayed at, you know, Airbnb and, and then had to get all the receipts for it. But you can but it's a nice little tax credit that you, that you could get for last year. You can claim on this tax return now, but it's gone after this. Ontario has a new Ontario Seniors Care at Home tax credit. So this is a new one that's now uh, a new permanent one. So it's a refundable personal income tax credit. Refundable, what that means is if your income is zero and you get this tax credit, they actually send you a refund even if you didn't have any tax withheld. So the non-refundable means you can pay zero tax, but you can't pay negative. So refundable means, you know, is, is more like an income support program. So a refundable personal income tax credit to help seniors with eligible medical expenses that support aging at home. Okay, so this is all about seniors care at home tax credit. So the credit is equal to 25% of your eligible medical expenses up to 6,000 for a maximum credit of 1,500 bucks. Okay, so it's a quarter of, of the 6,000 that you pay. These are medical expenses to help you be able to live at home. Okay, and again, a new kind of credit. So whatever province you're in, I'd suggest you you know, Google what all the different provincial tax credits are. There's like a, there's quite a few of them, and there's a quite a few new ones and things come that are coming and going. So just it's worth knowing what's going on in your province. Now, there's also the first time home buyers tax credit because you know real estate has gotten crazy here. And you know, for young people trying to buy a home, a lot of them have just given up completely. And there's so there's some tax credits that you know help at least somewhat. So the tax credit was 5000 and now it's 10000 So if you are buying your first home, you can claim a tax credit of 10000 bucks on your tax return. That's basically a $2,000 refund that you get. Now, another really good thing that's to do, and this is not new, but it's something I, I highly recommend, is sign up for the CRA My Account. Now, it's a pain to do it because you have to send it in and they mail you stuff. It's a kind of pain to do it, but it's worthwhile to set up your CRA My Account. It allows you to see the figures and slips CRA has for you. So if you're missing any T slips, such as T4s, T4As, or T5s, you should be able to, to download and print them from the CRA site. So often you're waiting for a slip to do your tax return, but you can just log in there and find it. You know, also if CRA has a letter for you, you can see what, what's going on. When your tax return is, is sent out very quickly, within a, just within a couple of days often, there's already a notice of assessment that you can see over there. So it's a, it's a good way for you to log in and see things. They even have a section of that you you know interesting to go look at called uncashed checks. So you might get free money if they ever sent you a check that got lost. So you can look up this uncashed check, see if you're in there, and if there is, maybe there's some money that you uh, never never received. The other reason that this is really useful is there's more and more CRA scams out there, and they they used to be pretty bad that most people could identify them, and they're getting more and more realistic. So it used to be that they intentionally made them look clumsy because they didn't want to get the sophisticated people. Basically, it's, you know, for scammers, their their nightmare is they send out a scam and a million people reply. Well, that's a problem because they only have a few people working there. How, how are they going to sort through which of those million are actually suckers that will fall for this, right? So what they need is people to screen themselves out. 
Okay, so that's why they used to have, you know, spelling errors and a bunch of obvious mistakes. So any sophisticated people would just automatically look at it and say, oh, that's obviously a scam. But then they get the more gullible, less knowledgeable people. So now what they're finding is because they've got, it's more computerized, they can do much more of this now. So they're having more sophisticated scams and it gets harder and harder to see them. So anytime you get an email that says something from CRA, never click on it. Never click on anything that's there. You don't know if it's, if it's real or not. What you do is, is if it says CRA has this or has something, then what you do is always log into my account the normal way and look to see if it's there. And if, it, if it's there, then you can see that it's really there, but never click on a link that's on an email that looks like it's from CRA. Even if it is from CRA, you don't want to click on it. It's better to go in straight through my account. So that's what that's part of why I recommend everybody should have this my account. So and if you've got you know parents and stuff that are not that good with Computers, it's a good thing to sign on, you know, get them for it so and show them how to do it because then, again, they're not going to click on these CRA scams. In fact, even if you just do it for them, you'll be able to see what they have and that, you know, you could tell them, you know, you get an email from CRA, don't click on it, just call me and I'll look after it, you know. So, so that's for last year. The new thing that's coming up this year that's quite interesting, and it's now April, so it's going gonna, it's, uh, gonna to be out any time. Is the it's called the tax free home savings account. I did a video uh, podcast about this FHSA. So you know we have our RSP and we have TFSA. Now we have FHSA. So now I'm calling it the renters RSP. So it's supposed to be out. You know, as of April, financial institutions as of this month they're allowed to have it. Most don't have it yet. So it's always it's always complicated when they have new things coming out like this for them to be out. You know, I was I thought at the time they would just make an exp extension of the home buyer's plan, but it's an entirely new thing. So all the financial institutions have to do new programming and that's why there's this delay in getting it out. So it's expected to be available by mid-2023. So you can contribute up to 8,000 per year for up to five years. It's 40,000 total if you do not own a home. So you have to be a first-time home buyer. So contributions are tax deductible in addition to your RSP room. So that's why it's just free RSP room. If you use it to buy a home, you can withdraw tax-free and you don't have to repay it. And this is in addition to the RSP, the home buyer's plan that already exists. So if you don't buy a home or, or ever intend to, you can keep the tax deductions and merge the FHSA into your RSP. So that's why it's just, a, it's not, you don't lose anything. It's a free 8,000 of room. So it's the best account to save for a home and it's free RSP room for renters. So you have to qualify as a first time home buyer, which means you or your spouse don't own a home that you live in this year or the last four calendar years. That's the definition of it. So if you don't have a home, you can open up this account. And you know, even for parents, I suggest this is a good way if you want to help your kids out give them some money. You can give them some money to help with the FHSA, make the contribution, and then carry forward the deduction. Because if you contribute it in 2023, you don't have to claim it in 2023. You can carry it forward until the first year, like if you're in school, the first year that you you know work and have a you know higher income over 50,000, that's when you claim it, you get a bigger refund on it. And that could be, you know, it's either free RSP room, you know, usually you have to work before you get RSP room, but here you don't. It's a, it's a very useful thing. I encourage you to watch my other podcast uh, video about it. The other interesting thing is that this year, there have been some huge tax refunds. We've seen it among our clients specifically. Our clients are not representative of the public, but we've been getting some really huge ones. You know, so last year, quite a few investors ended up paying a lot of tax. The market was way up in 2020 and somewhat in 2021. So a lot of people had big capital gains and paid quite a bit of tax. Now, last year, the market was generally down, so not, most people didn't have capital gains and may have even been, you know, claimed capital losses that they can claim back. They can, so if you have a capital loss, you can carry it back up to three years or carry it forward. So a lot of people are carrying it back to previous years. So we did a lot of that this year. So now our clients specifically have been getting some huge refunds, and it's kind of interesting. So a fair amount of our clients are doing strategies like the Smith Maneuver, or they're borrowing to invest. And the reason for that is because we found, because we're, we are fee-for-service financial planners, we actually do the financial planning. And we found that it's very hard for most people to save enough money to have the retirement that they want. And often what they're doing, if you add something like the Smith & Marie, you're basically using equity in your home to borrow to invest to help you save for retirement. It can be a huge benefit 
for your retirement. Smith Maneuver and Boring to Invest is an amazing strategy for the right people done the right way over the long term. It is not for everybody. But for quite a few of our clients, a lot of people come to us for it because we are Canada's expert on it. So now last year, interest rates went up a lot. So our clients are paying more in tax deductible interest from interest rates rising seven times last year, seven increases. So interest rates have gone up quite a bit, and it's a much bigger deduction this year. So now, especially the clients with large investment loans, we have a few with really big loans and they're getting huge amounts. So we actually had an, a bunch of clients that have had huge refunds between 20000 and 90000 So a $90,000 tax refund. Isn't that actually cool? Yes. So no, So how do you get a really big refund? So I actually had a, a special uh, talk specifically about this, but the big ones are refinance your home and do a huge RSP contribution. So that's often, you know, put two, we run into people that with high income, but have 200 or 300,000 of RSP room. Refinance, yeah, stick it all in your in your RSP at once, claim it over several years, as long as you can claim it over, you're going to work for a few more years at high income and you get these huge refunds every year. It's an amazing way to do it. You can do it all at once while refinancing your home. The other one is, is the way to get it really big is a Smith maneuver plus a large investment loan. So for example, we've done a number of clients that have done a million or even 2 million or even 3 million investment loans. So just to give you a sense of what it is, if you you know have a million dollar investment loan, interest rates are like six or seven, that kind of range. So it's like 60 or 70,000 of interest that you pay. But if you're doing Smith maneuver, it basically can be done without affecting your cash flow. And now if you're a 50% tax bracket, you know, that's a 30 or $35,000 tax refund you're, you're getting. If you do 2 million, it's 60 to 70,000 plus, you know, what, you know, what you get if you're also doing RSP and stuff. So that's how you get these really massive tax refunds, which is, which is kind of interesting. So last year was a big issue when, among our clients. We we had to adjust. One time, every time the interest rates went up, we had to adjust the Smith maneuver because you're doing some regular monthly investing, but interest rates go up. You need more of the money that's cr uh, the extra credit you're claiming from your mortgage payment to pay the extra interest. You can capitalize on the interest. Also, if, if, if interest rates go up too much, maybe you're, you're not even paying principal on it. So you actually have to increase your mortgage payment or you have the money have money coming out of your investments. So it was a big thing going on last year. And we had, you know, we had, we've been struggling with this higher interest payments last year. You know, investments were, it was kind of a, a difficult year last year. Investments were down and yet people are struggling to make these interest payments, right? The higher interest pay payments. This year, it's different. The market's at the bottom and, and it's rising and, and look like we're going to get a really big recovery sometime soon, maybe this year or next year. And at the same time, we're getting these massive tax refunds. Kind of interesting, uh, interesting time. Now, one thing is if you get a large tax refund, don't, don't think of this as a free thing. Do something smart with it. So it's a good time to you know talk to your planner or think about what the best use is. Don't just go, no, I, I, it's a freebie. It's not a freebie. It's, you know, it's something that you got. So don't just spend it. Do something smart. Use it to help create a good future for you down the road. All right, so that's my talk for today. So what's new for your 2022 tax return? What you learned was how today's high inflation affects your taxes, how the work from home at WFH, that's the new acronym you got to learn, trend affects tax returns, and that's going to be a big thing going forward, how to save tax on COVID-19 benefits you had to repay, new tax credits this year, and you know, new tax credits and deductions and, and what's disappearing, what deductions and credits are discontinued in 2023, what's the difference between a tax deduction and a tax credit, how to estimate your tax refund from a deduction or a credit, how to avoid CRA scams, effective use of the FHSA, the, which I'm calling the renter's RSP, which is coming out for 2023. And we talked a bit about our clients and why some people are getting really huge tax refunds this year. So thanks a lot for listening. So again, my name is Ed Rempel. My blog is called Unconventional Wisdom. It is the number one blog in Canada for a financial planner. I've also got a YouTube channel and a podcast. You can find them. The YouTube is just go edrempel.com backslash watch. And the podcast is edrempel.com backslash listen. So you can watch or listen and find me right away. If you're potentially interested in working with us, there's no pressure at all. The way to do it is go to uh, edrempel.com, the blog, hit contact, and you can uh, fill out a form for a free 30-minute consultation. Just tell us just a very briefly about yourself. And one of our financial planners will have a call with, with a discussion just to see what you're looking for. And we'll see whether or not we're a, you know, a fit to be able to work together. 
Also, I appreciate if you like and subscribe to my blog, YouTube channel, and podcast. Help get the word out. There's information everywhere, the conventional wisdom. But after you hear that, come to my blog or my podcast. Find out what really works in real life. Thanks a lot for listening, and we'll talk to you next week.